Hey, I'm Joe Deganzik, and this is the show where we talk about all the new forms of high efficiency, specifically LED lighting, lighting design for your home and making that a wonderful environment and how to tie all of that together with the internet of things or the old term home automation with all those plugged in devices and you can control your lights and all that stuff. And speaking of controlling lights, we've got some great products for you on this episode where we're actually going to review um, the first um, smart bulb that's been on this series, even though it's been out for a while. We've got two bulbs I'm specifically talking about, and I do use these in my daily life. These are the Philips Hue bulbs, and we'll give you some close-ups of these um, bulbs. Um, we've got the A19, which is a traditional, regular old uh, looking light bulb, and then we've got a BR30, which is a flood bulb. And they're both fairly looking, fairly good looking um, bulbs, but they do have some pros and cons, and I'll get to that here in a little while. And unfortunately, they actually kind of have more cons than pros. They have some cool factor, but um, this is put out by Philips. Like I said, Philips has been around since 1891, but they just recently said we're getting out of the lighting business. They're selling their whole lighting division to a private equity firm. And so the question now is what is going to happen to Philips uh, lighting ventures in terms of their ventures into Hue with the connected smart bulbs and all their other lighting products. Are they going to go away? Probably not. Philips Hue came out in late 2012 and was one of the first um, connected bulbs and it offered you, offered you the ability to dim and brighten, change to a multitude of different shades of colors and also change color temperature from a warm white to a cool white. And it's really cool, but it's really expensive. If you want to get into the game of um, these Philips Hue color changing bulbs, you're going to have to start with a starter pack, which is going to be three of these bulbs or three of these guys or some of their other products. They have these light strips and they've got some bloom bulbs and some other interesting things. But you're going to have to start with three of these guys and a hub. The hub runs on Zigbee technology. Why do you need to know that? Not really, but Zigbee is one of the home automation protocols and the hub plugs into your home network. And then you can communicate with these bulbs over um, Wi-Fi. Primarily you do this via an app. You can do it through a website, but that's kind of clunky. And their own app actually is pretty clunky. We'll show that off here in a few. Um, the bulbs, um, you know, pretty decent looking bulbs. They have some challenges. We'll show you a picture of this. Um, the comparison on the left side is a Cree 4 Flow um, LED bulb, and on the right side is the um, the Philips Hue bulb. As you can see, there's a shadow at the bottom of the lampshade because basically, well, there is nothing at the bottom of the Philips Hue bulb because the top is what put out puts out the light, and the bottom it basically has the circuitry and the heat sink in it. That's one of the cons. If you're just using these in fixtures that don't have lampshades or um, fixtures that are not going to have a problem, if there's a shadow, then you're probably not going to have a problem and you'll be okay. But if you do, then you might have to change all of your different um, lights out in anything that is next to each other so that you don't have um, one lampshade that looks different than the other one. For um, 200 bucks for the starter kit, and if you want additional bulbs beyond it, at $60 a bulb, that's really expensive for Philips to have kind of goofed on a couple areas. I'll get to that later. And you probably also want to know how do I use them? Why do I even have them? I mean, I bought them um, about a year, eh, about a year and a half ago, and I've slowly integrated them into my home automation system so that I don't have to use the apps because it's clunky to me to always pull out my phone um, and to scroll through pages and work with an app when I just want to make a lighting adjustment. Sometimes it's convenient, but most of the times it's not. So I want to show you how I use um, the Philips in, in one example, in one setting of my current home and it's pretty cool actually. Take a look. So this is my very small bathroom that is primarily lit by overhead lighting. So when I moved in, I said, let's get a globe. 
stick a hue light in it and put it on the floor. And I've got some of my Insteon controls on the wall. So if you turn the light off, you see that the overhead lighting creates a lot of shadows, which doesn't look great when you're trying to get ready in front of the mirror. So the light uh, on the floor creates some interesting ambiance, and I can bring it up to 50% with a uh, custom action button. And now the light is dispersed from the bottom and the top. So we're going to jump to an ambiance setting now. We're going to ditch the overhead light, and it's going to pick the color of the day automatically, which is orange, and show us that we're in low light mode. The app was uh, what triggered that, and uh, now we're triggering it via a button press. So the hue is integrated across my home automation system. So you know, you can see it's uh, got some really nice colors. Jump from blue to red. And then a uh, custom action on the green button will actually trigger a nice moonlight blue, so to speak. And then we're gonna go ahead, jump uh, a little to um, overhead light and green on the hue, about 50%. One action button press will take us all the way back up to full brightness and the hue will return to warm white. So obviously, because I use a lot of home automation scenes and I do a lot of nice long fades between different scenes and different lighting levels, I'm concerned about, obviously, dimming. Now, Philips actually describes in their, in their product information, their literature, they describe these bulbs as having perfect dimming. Now, as you know, on this show, I have a dimming torture test that I generally put most of the bulbs that we review through to see if they will survive. I already know the answer to it, but you don't. So um, let's just jump over there right now. This is our standard 30 second dimming torture test. The Philips Hue bulb does fail the test. They're using a stepped dimming instead of a nice, beautiful, smooth dimming like Philips should have done. I'm very disappointed with that. And the uh, at least the noise profile is much quieter than even the Cree 4 flow bulb, which is definitely a good thing. Next up, I wanna show you a live demo of some of the Philips Hue apps in action. This is all custom uh, created uh, I, um, colors and so forth. I created a palette so that I can simply change from one to the next and uh, not have to always use a separate app. I can kind of coordinate it uh, just like you saw in the bathroom with the even the physical buttons. And obviously I have app control of if I wanna uh, dim it down uh, quite a bit or even turn it all the way off. And of course uh, I can uh, turn it all the way back on and take it back to something like uh, white. And uh, it'll take us back there. But uh, the Philips native app is also pretty cool, but I find it to be a little bit clunky. Uh, you would think that uh, you could go in here and click lights and you could, um, you know, you can dim the, uh, this is normally in that globe, uh, you could dim and brighten this, but how do you change the colors? Oh, you have to go into scenes and, and you have to, click on a scene and you have to kind of do this or you have to change something around. It's not very intuitive as where you change the light to control it. So I like this other app which is very very handy for just controlling what you need to control really really fast. You can obviously change the brightness if I can grab it there, the brightness um, intensity of the lamp. You can obviously then shift through colors very easily by literally just dragging this and it'll just adjust it and you can do um, any sort of color. There's a lot of apps for Philips Hue. If you wanna do color temperature, that thing where you adjust your lights to either keep you to either keep you awake or put you to sleep, um, you can take, us, uh, take it kinda of close to the, um, the other lamp, which is the um, Cree 4 Flow on the left. Um, you could take it all the way to the farthest of the warm spectrum, that's like 2200 degrees Kelvin, and then I could start taking it closer to daylight, and uh, you see it turning more and more and more blue as we get over to here. So if you can't be bothered to use a smartphone app, or physical buttons, or pole chains, and maybe you forgot your smartphone or tablet entirely, but you do have a wearable device, including the new Apple Watch, 
you can control Philips Hue right from your wrist. So let's give you some um, specs on it because we skipped that in the first part of the show. Instead of being a true 60 watt equivalent replacement, it really isn't. Um, these are, I'll pick them up off the table so I can show you on uh, the right sides here. Um, the, the traditional regular old light bulb is only 600 lumens. So that's 200 lumens less than what a regular 60 watt LED replacement should be. And this guy is 630, so a little bit brighter, but they're really not what they should be living up to. And Philips had to cut some corners um, when they were making these bulbs. Um, the reason I also say that they're less efficient is mainly because that they're about 9 watts each. And um, 9 watts to put out 600 lumens is less efficient than if you're putting out more lumens. Now, Philips does have, they introduced this about a year or so ago, they have a, a product called the Philips Lux bulb. And it looks very similar, if I pick up the right bulb here, it looks very similar to this guy, but it only does one thing, and that is dimming and brightening at different fade rates, and on and off, and it has remote control. No colors, no color temperature, and it's priced at $20 a bulb, but you still have to have some sort of compatible bridge a Zigbee bridge, or you have to buy the starter kit, which is probably going to run you $100. And uh, so basically there's that, um, and that is 750 lumens, so it's much closer to being a regular traditional 60 watt replacement bulb. And at $20, it's a little bit easier for most people to um, spend that. It's still expensive, but you're getting remote technology built into it, and that's not in traditional regular old five to seven dollar LED bulbs. So, um, some pros and cons. The pro, is it cool? Absolutely. It's color changing, it's built into your regular old light bulb form factor, that's totally cool. It has a lot of apps, it has a lot of integrations. You can do it with many different systems. With IFTTT, you can control the hue bulbs from anywhere in the world with the app or with the website. Um, you can set timers and alarms. You can do disco through special apps and it'll sense music. It'll even actually, uh, some people have hacked it to make it so that depending on what you're actually watching on your TV, the colors will change based on what you're watching. So many different possibilities. But if you really want that cool factor, you're going to spend some money. And that's one of the cons. Also one of the cons, because Philips had to, they wanted to put in that color temperature technology, you know, warm to cool, they had to skimp out and cut a couple corners in terms of the actual color range, which is why some of the colors such as greens, yellows, and oranges are not very saturated when they're bright. And that's a downside. And Philips did some of their magic with mixing colors and they just, they cut a few corners and they could have made an incredible bulb for the same price. They put all the LED technology in it. They put the dimming technology. It's one package. They're not relying on any other company to do the dimming or anything like that. Philips, you could have made a much better product. Responsiveness, you saw that with the app and of course brightness as I talked about it. The responsiveness can be a problem sometimes. It doesn't make sense. My place here is 400 square feet. I do have the hub at one end of the place, but in a 400 square feet little place, you shouldn't have this problem. It is an issue. And the other thing is, unless you do custom programming, um, you don't have easy ways unless you buy Philips, the Philips tap device, which is a remote control um, that you can stick to a wall that amazingly doesn't require batteries, and that's pretty awesome. But other than that, you have to kind of make some magic happen if you want to integrate this with existing home automation physical buttons like I have. Please send me an email at questions at answers.lighting. I love your feedback. It's been great. It feeds our um, Q&A episodes and it's totally awesome. I try to get back to everyone as soon as possible and then we include a few of them on the monthly Q&A episodes. Here's everywhere that you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter. Um, we're not on Instagram, but you know we're pretty much everywhere that you would need to be. Um, the Philips Hue is an interesting product, but I really don't recommend it if you don't have the budget and you really have no need for it. Skip it, most likely. So that's it. I'm Joe Gansick for Lighting Answers, and I'll talk to you next time.